Have you ever wondered how a single error, a simple misjudgment, can lead to a catastrophe in the realm of aviation? In the intricate dance of aeronautics, each movement, each decision is paramount. The pilot's choices, guided by the symphony of technology at their fingertips, can spell the difference between a safe journey and a disastrous outcome. Yet, even with the most advanced systems, errors can occur, warnings can be misunderstood, and the results can be devastating. Let's dive into the scenario of Kenya Airways Flight 431, a stark example of how a series of missteps led to a tragic end. On January 30, 2000, Kenya Airways Flight 431 took off from Abidjan Ivory Coast with 169 passengers on board. The Airbus A310-300 was in a normal configuration for takeoff, its engines delivering thrust in accordance with the aircraft's weight and prevailing conditions. As the wheels left the tarmac and the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean opened up beneath, a stall warning pierced the cockpit. Almost immediately, the aircraft's first officer, Mully, who was piloting the plane, responded. He pushed the control column forward, a maneuver intended to increase the aircraft's speed and avert a stall. Yet the stall warning persisted, an unrelenting siren in the night in the pitch-black darkness with no visual references, the plane's nose-down attitude gave the illusion of a descent. But the reality was far more chilling. The plane, however, never passed a height of 400 feet and was descending towards the sea at an increasing speed. As the plane ascended, a false stall warning sounded, triggering a series of actions by the flight crew. First Officer Mully, the pilot flying, responded immediately to the warning. With the urgency of the oral stall warning and the activation of the stick shaker, he instinctively applied the recovery procedure. This involved changing the aircraft's pitch to a nose-down attitude in an attempt to counteract the supposed stall. This change in pitch would have caused a shift in vertical acceleration, giving the first officer the sensation of descent. In his mind, this was the correct response. He expected that by putting the aircraft into this nose-down position, the stall warning would cease. However, the warning persisted, playing on a loop in the cockpit until the aircraft reached a dangerously low altitude. Now, let's pause for a moment. Had the flight crew noticed red and black strips on the primary flight display, they would have been alerted to a false alarm. This information, however, didn't appear on the display. The stall warning, which had activated within the first few seconds of takeoff, along with the activation of the master warning, seemed to override any other visual cues. So while the stall warning was blaring in their ears and the aircraft was descending towards the sea, the flight crew remained blissfully unaware of their dire situation. They had no indication of the aircraft's descent, despite the change in vertical acceleration. The radio altimeter callouts, which should have alerted them to their decreasing altitude, were not registered. And the ground proximity warning system, the final line of defense against an impending collision, was drowned out by the stall and overspeed warnings. While Flight 431 was descending, the flight crew remained unaware of their dire situation. Amid the chaos in the cockpit, a critical warning went unheard. The Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS, is designed to alert the crew when the aircraft is in immediate danger of flying into the ground. This system should have been their lifeline, their final alarm before disaster. Yet, as Flight 431 rapidly descended towards the sea, the crew remained tragically unaware of their perilous situation. In the frantic moments that followed the false stall warning, the GPWS tried to sound its own alarm. But the GPWS warning was not the most prioritized warning in the cockpit. It was overshadowed, drowned out by the blaring stall and overspeed warnings. Those alarms, designed to alert the crew to a critical flight condition, were instead contributing to a dangerous sense of confusion and urgency. As the aircraft began to skim dangerously close to the sea's surface, the GPWS attempted to sound the alarm of impending collision. But its voice was lost in the cacophony of alarms already filling the cockpit. The GPWS warning, a dire whoop, that should have commanded instant attention, was cut short. It lasted a mere 50 milliseconds, a brief and inadequate warning of the disaster to come. A tool designed to save lives was essentially silenced, its critical message lost in the chaos. The crew, still grappling with what they believed to be a stall situation, were oblivious to the rapidly approaching sea. The lack of external visual references owing to the nighttime conditions and their over-the-sea trajectory 
further compounded the situation. In this critical juncture, the crew's attention was monopolized by the persistent stall warning and the stick shaker activation. The GPWS, the last line of defense against a ground collision, was effectively sidelined. Its warning, though brief, should have been a clarion call to action. But it was a call that went unheard, a dire warning lost in the din of confusion and alarm. The GPWS warning ceased after just 50 milliseconds, a mere whoop before the impending collision. Tragically, Kenya Airways Flight 431 crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, claiming the lives of all but 10 passengers. The investigation led by aviation experts revealed a series of unfortunate events and misjudgments that led to this devastating incident. First Officer Mully, the pilot flying, was confronted with an unexpected stall warning during takeoff. Despite the aircraft not being in a true stall situation, the warning, combined with the jarring activation of the stick shaker, prompted Mully to respond with what he believed to be the correct recovery procedure. He pushed the control column forward, causing the aircraft to descend. Yet despite this action, the stall warning persisted, adding to the confusion and tension in the cockpit. The investigation also highlighted the challenging conditions that the crew was operating under. It was nighttime and the flight was moving out towards the sea, providing no external visual references for the crew. This lack of visual cues possibly compounded the uncertainty and stress caused by the stall warning and the incessant activation of the stick shaker. Moreover, as Flight 431 descended dangerously close to the sea, the Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS, should have alerted the crew to the imminent threat. However, the GPWS was effectively silenced, only able to sound a mere 50 milliseconds of warning before being overridden by the prioritized stall and overspeed warnings. The tragic end of Flight 431 underscores the importance of several key aspects in aviation safety. Clear and accurate interpretation of information is vital, especially during moments of crisis. Every alert and warning in the cockpit serves a purpose and understanding them correctly can make the difference between recovery and disaster. Furthermore, the incident highlights the significance of decision-making under pressure. In the face of unexpected and confusing warnings, the ability to make sound judgments can be severely tested. The training and readiness of flight crews to handle such situations are of paramount importance. Lastly, the crash of Flight 431 brings to light the critical role of prioritizing warning systems in aviation. The fact that the GPWS warning was overridden by other alerts raises questions about the design and functioning of these systems. It prompts a re-evaluation of how these warnings should be sequenced and prioritized to ensure the highest level of safety. The tragic crash of Kenya Airways Flight 431 serves as a potent reminder of the crucial role of sound judgment, accurate information and quick decision-making in aviation safety.